All right, this is going to be about uh, the architectural design project or, or inventive exterior project. And the first stage of it is just going to be about designing your uh, facade, basically just a flat side of a building. So whatever references you choose is up to you. Um, and remember, these are just references, so you're going to adapt and change. And so your first stage is just to kind of figure out what proportion you want the building to be. Generally speaking, buildings are going to be rectangular. They may have triangles stacked on them, or they may have varying proportions, right? Your building might do this sort of thing, right? And it might have a roof that does that, that. Um, it might just be totally flat and have like um, articulations or something on the facade. And this stage is intended to figure out what this is going to be, be like in a certain amount of detail so that you can then develop. And the assignment is going to do, going to be to do five of these so that you can um, figure out five different buildings and designs. So I'm going to take this one reference that I have and kind of change it. The original design is proportioned more like this right here, but I'm going to extend that a little bit. One part of the reference is divided about right here, and then it's got a center with a larger division, and then it cuts off awkwardly right here, which I kind of like. Um, and I want to just extend out enough to make that bit of awkwardness like really clear and interesting because it looks like it should be symmetrical. Like you should have this division over here. And um, then its major proportions are divided about maybe one third down. And then the next division awkwardly is um, there's not really a major division on it, but it's awkwardly low over here, and then it's big over here. And there's kind of a division at the windows here. So it's all divided up sort of unevenly, which is kind of cool. And your building design, if you break it down to this sort of shape language right here, where it's very basic, very blocky, you'll immediately find out if the proportions are working on this level. If the proportions are interesting in working on this level, like you can kind of imagine that this building has windows and so on, it's probably going to be a decent one. And um, the job from there is to figure out what to do with those proportions and how to make it interesting. What do you need to eliminate? What do you need to include? And what do you need to exclude? So I'm just going to bring in a fainter version of that over here. And again, if you have trouble with getting too heavy too early, you can use the 10% cool gray marker or 10% cool gray Prismacolor pencil. So on this subdivision, right up at the top, there's a small sort of clock looking logo thing. There's actually a Masonic symbol on the reference. So I'm going to blow that up a little bit bigger than it actually is. And that actually that pushes out the top of the building to this very distinctive arc above the facade. I don't want to keep that arc because I like that arc and I think it's interesting. Then it has two little sub arcs over the columns here. And I'm just going to exaggerate those a little bit more, make them like mini versions of this. And the reference, they're kind of tiny but I want them to be a little bit bigger and, and relate more. And then over here, this part just sort of ends, and there's a little blocky cap on the other side. And I want to exaggerate that little blocky cap and include it over here too. Then, its next subdivision is down here, then another one down here, and then a small subdivision here. So the 
next thing that I want to do is start to include some of the distinctive character of this. And these things are going to need to line up pretty um, pretty carefully with the top. Um, so I have a column that's going to line up here and here. And a little tiny subdivision right here that's like set back. And then the actual facade gets broken up at the at the top uh, very slightly. Some brick kind of goes just a little bit out. But I think I want to exaggerate that and give it a little bit of flare so that it goes out at an angle. Because what I'm looking for in this sort of thing is to break up the contour as much as possible. And then this little subdivision kind of continues all the way through. So what I want to do is basically work through this and create um, as many interesting things about this building as I can. So I have this subdivision again, and it runs all the way across the building. And I want to make it bigger this time, wider, just so that it's like a little bit different. And again, I'm not doing this in perspective, I'm doing this flat because the flat shape language is really what defines the character of the building. When I convert it to form and turn it in perspective, that's going to help the character of the building as well. But right now, that, that'll just kind of like keep me back from doing interesting stuff with it. The next thing is I need to continue this column all the way down. And down below here, the column actually just kind of continues. And then it creates a box right about here. And this box is kind of inset. Then this part of the building is actually oddly outset. And then back here again, it's inset. And these proportional things that I've set up early on faintly are just kind of a guideline and I don't have to stick to them necessarily. Now, when I come down here, this is kind of going to be the corner of the building. And this corner has a column on it. And I'm not, I don't have room for a lot of detail of the column, but I can just indicate that that's a column right here. And there's a door down here. The door is a very boring door. So I can replace this with a different door, maybe have it be have have it have an archway or something like that, and little mini archways on the side so that I echo the top in the doorway. Um, and then I can go over here, I can subdivide, add this strange little window, and then continue on with a detail of the architecture. And if I find an architectural detail, like there's a subdivision of something, I want to make sure to just break up the contour, right? So if I come down and there's this subdivision of space, need something sharper, subdivision of space down here, and I hit another detail, I want to make sure that that detail continues out to break up the contour. So it's not just the straight line that goes right down. And then that comes down again and out to the front. And this is going to wind up being a brick texture. So if I want, I can leave myself a note and I can say like, this is brick, this is stone. Then I can go find different references for brick, stone, and so on. And then around here, this whole thing kind of subdivides into various sections. And this next little subdivision is kind of like brick mortar work detail. It's very like classical in its feel. I want to make sure that it breaks out from the contour. of the building. This 
so that it, it actually goes outside the outer contour. So I'm creating something interesting. So all I'm going to do is go through this whole entire house and do that here. Um, I also see them over here. Little teeth kind of coming down. And then there's a couple of windows right here. And I'm going to shrink and change them from the references. And they kind of have their own detail. And they're all subdivided with these like teeny little window divisions. So I don't want to be too fussy with that at this stage. I'm going to do texture studies later and figure all this out and how that's all going to work. Then over here, I've got those the same subdivisions running by again with the little teeth. And I've got a window. Then I'm going to make a different size. I'm going to line it up at the bottom. Use the same style of window. Tiny subdivisions. And then I don't want these little caps to line up, so I'm going to bring those caps out. So it's like uh, like a post around two invisible columns, or a lintel rather, around two invisible posts. And the difference is that my shape in one in one aspect would be like this of the window. And that's kind of boring, but if I do this and then I take and I stack on top of it and change the shape, I've made something much more interesting because now this kind of has a little bit more detail and a little bit more of, of, a, of an appeal than this. And this potentially also suggests a more complex form. And I also need places that are boring as well. Like at the bottom, you know, I also don't want to just do this, right? At the bottom, I can do a thinner subdivision and do something like that. So I'm going to do that at the bottom as well. Make it real thin. I'm going to carry that through all of them. And this is where it pays to have a very sharp pencil. And then there are some um, subdivisions that carry through here. Like this line kind of carries through on with the teeth. There's no teeth up at the top, but there's like a series of um, recession bits that kind of carry into the teeth and then this medallion kind of ends up being inside all that. I kind of shrunk the medallion down. If I want to I can invent some architectural details to go around here um, when I do further studies. And then down here I have kind of the most complicated bit. There's gonna be a column there, column there, and a column there. Then there's going to be the little outset that this column sits on, or these columns sit on, and that expands outward. Then there are tons of little teeth under that. I'm just going to throw some an example of what those teeth might look like. Then I've got another subdivision of space under that. And then even smaller is the brickwork coming down to this area. So there I've got that area laid out. And if I need to, I can go over off to the side and do more stuff like this and just kind of point arrows to like where this is going to be within that. Because um, I'm trying, I'm still searching, I'm trying to find all this stuff, right? It's not in a finished state. Again, these have small subdivisions, just like all the other windows and so on. Don't have to draw every subdivision. Then up here, this has like an engaged part to the column, like a little top to it. 
and then that has a little cap on top of that that's kind of that I'm just going to make this diagonal shape and then that's going to rest on here little subdivisions and then each of these columns has like a little ionic thingy and a capital and it just has a simple base at the bottom of each column Now, if I want to get really crazy with this and be more inventive and, and wonky with it, I can do that too. And I can add the wonk in at any stage. I probably won't add wonk in like this stage, but if I want to do wonky, I'll add that in um, as I develop the image further. Then these windows are much more narrow than they are in the reference. I'm going to change their proportion and everything with them. And rather than having the same subdivision of space, these windows, um, they have verticals in the reference, but I think I'm just going to go with horizontals. So that'll be kind of just something different to kind of vary it. And then over here, I've got the same sort of um, window setup. And the reference, it lines up with this, but I want to make it a little asymmetrical and weird. I'm going to bring it down a little bit so it doesn't quite line up. Bring it up, and I'm going to stack the the top above that. And this sort of style right here. Change the proportion of it from up here in the scale of it. Again, so the same kind of small subdivisions as the other windows, and then. This area is just going to be like this brick inset stuff with no particular detail. And then these windows are going to be outset on the outside of the building. So I can go ahead and include some of that detail. And then there's going to be like a little architectural detail that sticks out here. So I've got, again, that subdivision of space here. And it's going to run right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring that across so that it's like symmetrical and has something to do with it. And then this is blank in the reference and I think we kind of like we need a break from all the detail so I'm just going to leave that section blank. So what I've done is I've created a really distinctive and unique sort of building facade. There's a couple of details that I've left out like I don't know what's going to go in here you know, I need to work out exact textures and so on. But this is enough for a study. And um, so for this project, you're going to do like five variations like this, just sort of flat of different buildings. Um, and then when you get when you just you're just going to pick one and choose that one to develop.